Now, without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to welcome our keynote speaker for today. It's a long introduction, and she deserves a long introduction, so bear with me. Prof. Ojini, sorry, apologies. Prof. Ojini Kaitesi is an associate professor in the Department of Consumer and Food Sciences at the University of Pretoria, South Africa. She previously served as a lecturer and later a senior lecturer in the Department of Biotechnology and Food Technology at the University of Johannesburg. She holds a PhD, an MSc, a BSc in Food Science and Technology. Prof. Kaitesi undertakes research relating to improved utilization, I think this is very interesting, of indigenous underutilized African plant foods. Her vision is that her research will produce knowledge that is required to improve the utilization of African plant-based foods, making a significant impact on nutrition and food security in Africa. She has been involved in various research projects directed at fighting malnutrition using innovative solutions to reduce food wastage or loss and support small-scale agro-food businesses. I'm not done. Prof. Kaitesi has published more than 40 peer-reviewed international journal articles and book chapters. Prof. Kaitesi has earned several awards in her recognition of her contribution to science, such as a top researcher award in the lecturer, senior lecturer category by the Faculty of Sciences at UJ. She also received an African Women in Agricultural Research Development Fellowship in 2009. She is currently the recipient of the World Academy of Science Young Affiliated and was selected amongst the global young leaders to participate in the Science and Technology and Society Forum in 2019, held in Japan. Prof. Kaitesi serves as a board member of Health Equity and Rights Organization, a non-government organization based in Rwanda. I could go on and on, but I'll leave it at that. Please help me welcome the amazing, phenomenal woman. <laughs> And today I am, I'll start by thanking Mana Africa for inviting me to this special uh, course that I have very personal uh, feeling about. And I'm going to try and put a face to the child and eventually the grown up. I, I put all that information in my profile because I wanted to highlight what could be if we put money where our hearts are. Every single person sitting here has the desire to make a difference. They have that burning desire to do something, to bring about change. But the change that we talk about is not an abstract event. There is a face to every little thing that we're going to do tonight. So I'll try and summarize my life in the next 10 minutes but also linking it to the, to the real reason why we need to do this and why it is important to do what we need to do. Give funds and give money for this important cause. So I am Brandis by nationality, but I refer to myself as an African Union child because I was born in Uganda. So in my passport, there's a, uh, I was born in Uganda, but it's a Rwandese passport. It's confusing wherever I go. So people ask me, are you Ugandan or are you Rwandese? I spent the first part of my life in the DRC, so there's that part of my life as well. But what happened, what made, makes a young child move three different countries in less than seven years of their life, it was the same reason why we're sitting today. So when I was born, my parents were in exile in Uganda. They had run away from Rwanda because of political instabilities. Uh, for most of people sitting here, you've probably read or seen a video that looks similar to what we already saw early this evening of people killed on the streets, the Rwandan genocide. So the problem began 30 years before the Rwandan genocide began. So I am the consequence of what was happening in Rwanda. So I find myself born in Uganda, a refugee child without identity, without a sense of belonging. When I'm just one year old, in the early 80s, the Ugandan war began. There was a civil war in Uganda that particularly targeted Rwandese refugees in central Uganda. So my parents pack their bag, become 
refugee number two. So we ended up in refugee camps in Uganda. And uh, the only memories that I have of that life is really the gun, the, the sound of the gun, the strange life, and the loss of my dear sister. So that's all that I can tell. But I know deep down in my heart, I was a, a little bit damaged. My soul was bruised, and I wasn't a child like other children would be. So the guns went too far, and we were moved by the UN to the DRC for a safe spot, if you may. In Uganda, in the camp, we were not having an education. We just needed to be safe and not be shot or killed, and many people died. But when we got to the DRC, education changed my, my world. Like the, the wise man Nelson Mandela said that education is the greatest weapon that can change the world. And in my immediate child, as a four-year-old, and in my world today, education actually changed my life. So as a young child in, in, the, in the DRC, in the camp, a few people gathered together who were teachers without papers and thought, what can we do with these kids running all over the place? There has to be something that we can do about this. And they started um, outside. So when I started writing my ABCs, actually, it was on the ground. There wasn't a blackboard or anything like that. But something happened. A few volunteers were flown, flown into the camp, and they started some structured education. And my immediate world changed. Because when we were in the school, we didn't worry about anything at all. It didn't matter that we lived in a camp or that there was no food the next day. Remember when you are in the camp, even the food that you eat is not determined by you or your parents. Someone kind enough needs to send something in. Whether the beans and the milli milli has been in store for five years, it doesn't matter. That's what you get. So in the class, in the camp, that immediate world changed. I could just simply jump and sing and be a child. I began to believe that I was actually a child, that I didn't have to be quiet all the time. Because in the world, the one thing you hear is, keep quiet. They will hear us and they're going to shoot. Just keep quiet. But in school, in the camp, we then started singing and jumping the rope and throwing the stones. We were just kids. That immediate world changed. So beyond looking at the professor that would be, we really need to think about the immediate world as well. And hopefully, the longer term world, my world now would be. But for now, I beg you, every single person sitting here, think about that child that looks like me when I was four years, five years old, six years old. Like the ones that we see on TV with flies and with stuff on their faces. That child deserves at least a bearable world in their immediate world that they have now. In that world, I felt safe. I do not remember many people in the camp. I was so young. But I remember Madam J, the volunteer who was from England. And the songs that she told us and what I did, me and my brother would then create another session at night at home. We would start singing. And then the parents would join in. And the next door tent would join in. Before they knew it, the parents started to not thinking about the war and what it had done to us. It's a world that is changing because of one thing, education. But who made that possible? Who sent in Madam Jen to our camp? She might have volunteered to come to the cup, but someone, a kind, compassionate stranger, without a face, in my opinion, sat in a room like this one and put something where their heart was. They sent Madame jo, uh, Jen. They gave us two blackboards to write our A's and A's and B's and C's on. They created a world without knowing who we were. So today, tonight, as we sit here, 
I do encourage every single person sitting here and your friends and their friends to put that money into the heart of the hands of the child who will be changed by your act of kindness and compassion. My life changed then and it continues to change today. It was then, as a young child, that I decided whatever happens in my life, I'm going to be a teacher. So I ended up in education now as a professor because of that world that changed. So you see, you can't actually change someone. You can put a face to what you're going to do tonight. And that face could be someone who was like me over 30 years ago. A child without hope, a child without aspiration who would become a teacher of others, who would bring about change. So every time I am in class, in first year, I look at my children as raw materials. If you work in a factory, you would know that everything comes in rough and undefined, and it goes out as a finished, very nice, expensive product. So I believe that my life was put here on this planet to go through what I did as a child so I can be the change that I wanted to see 30 years ago. I hoped and prayed that what I saw as a child and then saw it again in 94 when I found half of my family day in Rwanda would never happen again. But it's happening now in, in southern Cameroon. It's happening now elsewhere on the continent. The same cycle is coming back but I'm going to do everything that I can as a human being to bring about the change that I desperately need. And I encourage change in my life by changing other people's life. I'm probably paying it forward, and I know you have your own story, and it's your chance to pay it forward. Today, you get a chance to do that. You stop wishing and put things in action you become the change that we all want to see. I want to thank you all, and I want to, to hope that today we begin a journey of great things to happen in the future. And when we do sit here or sit elsewhere, we will be grateful that we came, and we will be grateful that we made a difference. Thank you so much, and I'm grateful for being here. Thank you.